Dinevor. There can hardly be a better place in Wales to celebrate our stories than here at Dinevor. According to tradition, this was the ancient seat of the kings of Deheibarth, a kingdom that stretched the length and breadth of southwest Wales until its last king, Rhys ap Teodor, fell to Norman forces in 1093. He left at least three children, two boys, Griffith and Howell, and a daughter called Nest. Griffith fled to Ireland and grew up in exile there. Howell and Nest were captured by the Normans, Howell blinded to make him useless as a leader for Welsh uprising, while Nest became a ward of the King of England. Sometime during her time at royal courts, she caught the eye of the King's younger brother, Prince Henry, became his mistress and gave birth to a royal son. A stray arrow cut short Rufus's reign, but that's another story, and Prince Henry became King Henry I of England. Eventually, he married Nest off to an ambitious Norman, Gerald de Windsor, keeper of the Norman castle of Pembroke. Nest and Gerald seemed to have rubbed along reasonably well for the first few years and amassed a brood of children. But some years on, while at a Christmas feast, Nest met her distant cousin, Owain, Prince of Powys. Now she was a renowned beauty and seems to have made a tremendous impression upon the prince. So much so that early on in the new year, Owain and some of his men attacked Gerald's half-built castle of East Kennen. According to the tale, finding themselves under attack, Nest persuaded her husband to escape down the latrine before surrendering the castle to Owain, who whisked her away, some say for a few months, some a few years. Whether or not she went willingly with a handsome young prince, or indeed was abducted, I will leave to your imagination. Having cleaned himself up from the stinking midden pile and recovered some of his broken pride, Nest's husband Gerald sent word to King Henry of her abduction, and soon Norman forces lined up along Powys's border, threatening to invade unless their firebrand prince returned the princess of de Haybath to her husband. Eventually, she was returned, and as part of Owain's punishment, he was persuaded to join King Henry's forces, later becoming the first Welshman ever knighted for bravery. But the story doesn't end there. Some years later, Nest's brother Griffith, now of age, gathered together Irish mercenaries and sailed back to de Haybarth, intent upon reclaiming his father's throne. He set up a rebel court at Corte Cadno and gathered together men once loyal to his father and the royal line of de Haybarth and ransacked Norman holdings and castles across South Wales. King Henry ordered Gerald to take an army from Pembroke to defeat Griffith's siege of Carmarthen Castle, while also sending a Norman force west towards de Haybarth under the leadership of none other than the now trusted Prince Owain of Powys. It's said that revenge is best served cold, and that's perhaps why both Gerald and Owain failed to follow the King's orders, join forces, and put down the rebellion at Carmarthen. Instead, they met at the side of the Towy, faced each other, and fought. Owain was killed, Gerald mortally wounded, and the river turned red with their blood. Nest became a widow, but not for long. Her brother, Griffith, eloped with the feisty princess Gwenllian of Gwynedd, and together they ruled as rebel king and queen of Corte Cadno until an uprising against the Normans in 1136 went badly wrong, and Gwenllian, forced to lead a rebel Welsh army against the Normans at Kidwelly, was killed along with their son, Morgan. Some months later, Griffith too died. Some say of a broken heart. Four of Griffith and Gwenllian's sons remained to take up the cause and each ruled de Haybarth in turn. But it's the youngest, Rhys, who became known as Ararglwyd Rhys, the Lord Rhys, who leaves the greatest legacy. It is he who built this castle 
possibly on the ruins of the earlier fortress of his forefathers, and is perhaps best celebrated as a patron of the arts and culture, holding the first Eisteddfod at which bards gathered to compete in verse for a chair, and founding Strata Florida Abbey, where later the White Book of Hradech was written. And it is within these illuminated pages that we find the earliest versions of those stories we've come to know as the four branches of the Mabinogi and many of the other great myths of Wales. And who knows, these very walls may once have resounded to the sound of the Cavaruidion of Dinevor Slis telling those wondrous tales. And maybe in the summers to come, they will again. <laughs>